Services of uh, Louisiana. At this time, we're going to have Ms. Candace Dinger come up and say a few words about Hargrave Funeral Home. Good day. Um, I am Candace Dinger, and it is a pleasure to be here today. We are always excited when we can get outside of the facility and have a day of positivity and seeing familiar smiling faces. Um, I'm sure everyone kind of knows what Hargrave Funeral Home does. We do funeral, cremation, memorial, and pre-planning services. But a lot of people don't realize we do so much more than that. We are very community driven and we give back to our community a lot because we are loved ones who live here. We are natives, we are longtime residents, our families are from these areas and we wanna see the areas prosper and grow. So we are always out and about either through volunteering or sponsoring and helping others and communicating with others. And we enjoy what we do. And I know that sounds kind of odd, but helping families when they have a loss, guiding them, supporting them, and watching our parish grow and seeing the love and the life and the future generations come forward is really, really a blessing for us. And so we just wanna thank you for allowing us to be here today to sponsor and to be part of this community. Thank you all very much. All right, thank you so much, Candace. Um, next, we have, uh, at this time, Mayor Lee Dragna. Uh, would you mind coming up, saying a few words about LAD Services of Louisiana, as well as we introduce our honored speaker. All right, so uh, it's not LAD, it's LAD. Oh, but LAD. It's okay, Ty. <laughs> um, yeah, we 200 people strong. We have a, a tremendous backlog of work. We do mainly marine construction and repair. And uh, we, we support our community. We, we, we support just about anything that anybody asks us to do in this community, and uh, it works out really good. So enough about LED, you know. So as a mayor, I'm not even going to talk about Morgan City much at all. Um, but, um, you know, a really good friend of mine, Clay Higgins, uh, asked me to introduce him. He don't even show up. Uh, but he's not showing up because he's voting for stuff. So uh, I, I, I said, okay, that's, that's, that's okay. And then a, another good friend of mine, John Shotan, says he's going to take the, the reins here. Well, he says he's a little nervous, and uh, he wants me to speak for a little while, so he only got to speak for a couple minutes. But I said, no, nah, I don't know if I'm going to do that. So as we all know, Clay is in charge of uh, is the third congressional district in DC for D.C., for Louisiana. And uh, John's been with him since the beginning, right, John? Basically, yeah. yeah. So uh, if I don't get uh, uh, Clay on the phone, I get John, uh, one or the other, and all they call me right back. And uh, I'm sure they do the same thing for y'all. So without further ado, uh, John Showtime with the Third District. Now look, that's not what Congressman Higgins said at all. He told me, sure, I'm not going. You stuck with Lee. <laughs> and what else I'm going to say? Yes, sir. I, I mean, I don't have much more argument to do. Well, today might not be a whole bunch of positive things that come out of my mouth. So I'll start off with something positive. Y'all are a beautiful group of people. Uh, Y'all all look healthy. Um, there's a lot of people in here that I've been working with since the beginning, Mayor President, well, Mayor President, the President being one, and also Lee Dragna, and I've had the pleasure of working with Miss Sarah Dake uh, since the beginning, but the most important person in the room today is Mayor Matthews, I mean, is Reverend Matthews, for one reason and one reason only, because I know if he's in here, he's praying for him, <laughs> and I need all the prayers I can get, brother. <laughs> So I see a lot of familiar faces in here. So I know that some of y'all know who I am. And you know, Lee didn't do a very good job of telling y'all who I am. So I'll give y'all a little bit of background. Uh, I am an Army combat veteran. Uh, I fought in Panama when we was uh, trying to get Manuel Noriega out of there, the notorious drug dealer. Um, after the military, I worked at Angola State Penitentiary. And I wasn't wearing stripes, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> I figured, well, they should be pink, 
but I was lucky enough not to be wearing those. Um, after the prison, I worked in the oil field. Uh, I worked on the rigs, uh, mallard drilling, Parker drilling, Hercules. And I also was a third party uh, wellhead technician for Wood Group and Cameron. Uh, police officer for 12 years, full time. And uh, that's where I met Congressman Higgins. Um, he showed up at the PD at, uh, in 2004. I had been there since 99. And uh, shortly thereafter, we became friends. He joined the SWAT team. So he and I have been through fire together, which makes our bond so close. So if y'all catch me say Clay a few times, don't hold it against me. I mean Congressman Higgins, but we've been friends for so long that sometimes it just comes out of my mouth that way. But uh, it's not a disparaging remark. It's, it's out of friendship. So I will start off today with the most recent $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that has passed and is in law. Um, as most of you should know, Congressman Higgins was a hard no on that. And the reason he was a hard no was because the bill is filled with things that are not infrastructure, not even close. Now, proponents of this bill would have you believe that Louisiana is going to get $6 billion over 10 years for infrastructure and bridges or roads and bridges. Well, truth be told, it's 1.2 because 4.8 of the six billion that they're talking about was already there before the bill was ever passed. So if you take 1.2 over 10 years, and I'm no mathematician, but that comes out to about $100 million a year for 10 years. Now, on the large scale, when you're looking at the big picture, that's not a lot of money. I can think right now of two projects in the third district that that money could not cover. One being the I-49 connector, and the other being the Lake Charles Bridge. So the bill is what it is. It is law now, and, and Congressman Higgins has said, look, it's law now, and I'm going to do all I can to get as much of the monies that we do have to the third district. You know, that's what he's about. He's against something, but once it becomes law, here he comes. You know, And that's, that's his job. You know, he got to take care of the constituents of his district, and uh, that's what we all plan on doing. So this infrastructure package is going to cost Louisiana job creators $1.3 billion in taxes and regulations. With a return of $1.2, that doesn't seem like a win for Louisiana, now does it? And this is coming out of $110 billion that... I'm not going to say earmarked, because, but $110 billion that is for roads and bridges, hard infrastructure. So Louisiana gets 1.2 out of 110. I mean, I think we got like 50 states. If you do the math, it seems like we're not getting a real good end of that stick. The bill also increases the national debt. And it enacts burdensome, reg burdensome regulations and, of course, promotes the Green New Deal. Now, the saddest part of this bill passing is it didn't have the votes. The bill was not going to pass. There was Democrats voting against it. And we had 13 Republican, and I'm going to say it, traitors that went over to the other side simply because they didn't have the intestinal fortitude to stick by their morals and their principles and vote no on the bill, afraid, worried about who's going to vote for me if I vote against this bill. It's just one of those things that you have to deal with in politics. Um, you know, I, I took this job with Clay, hoping to learn some things. And believe me, I, I got a college education now just from this job. Never had one before. <laughs> um, but there is some things that I learned that I wish I hadn't learned. It, some of the stuff is just so disheartening, it, it is hard for me to deal with at times. <clears throat> let's see. Now I've lost my spot, but now I found it. Okay. Let's move over to the big bill that's coming up. 
Build Back Better. Um, bill is going to cost $4 trillion, $4 trillion of which we do not have, that our children and grandchildren are going to have to pay for. Um, First and foremost, the, the one that stuck out to me the most, and I'm, I'm going to read off a few things that's in this bill, but the one that stuck out to me the most is the first one. Provides the IRS with $80 billion for tax enforcement and 87,000 more IRS agents. So you got to believe, with all of that, you're bound to get a knock at your door. <laughs> Well, no, of course not. Of course not. You're bound to get a knock at your door, and it, I just think it's going to be a cluster. It's going to be um, weaponized. That's the reason they're doing it. They think that, uh, you know, John Showtime, a guy that gets paid by the government, is somehow the reason why we don't have good roads and bridges. You know, my little thousand dollars a year I might have to pay or whatever it is I don't know the exact number but they want to go into every American's business every American's bank account and they want to be I mean just deep in your business and it's not it's not a good thing the, the federal government has no business in your checking account none but they're gonna go there if this bill passes Okay, it also, another thing that, that points out, and I'll come back to that when I'm talking on something else later, but it grants mass amnesty to illegal immigrants. Mass amnesty. Everybody here already? Amnesty. Amnesty means that you got a pathway to citizenship, which means eventually you'll be able to vote. And, of course, the Democrats think all immigrants are Democrats. Hopefully they're wrong, but that's their plan. It also allows tax dollars to be used for on-demand abortion. So your tax dollars, you know, be used to pay for abortion. I totally disagree with that, and I'm quite sure there's many in here that also disagree with it. Now, there was a time in Louisiana where if a man filed for unemployment, he had to prove each week that he was still unemployed and that he was actively searching for a job. Today, no more. And on the federal side, with welfare benefits, there's no work, this bill will have no work requirements for able-bodied individuals in order to collect welfare. So it just perpetuates the cycle of people not wanting to work at a time where we have, what is it, 10.4 million open jobs in the United States, just begging for people to go to work. And they won't go to work because it's better to stay home. You know, I don't know about them, but if I stayed home, I'd definitely lose my mind. I can't stay at the house that much. The bill also impedes and bans domestic energy and mineral production, which increases our dependencies on resources supplied by OPEC, China, and Russia. Now, think about what I just said. We are going to rely on our resources to heat our homes, for our electricity, to fight the wars of this country, we're going to rely on our enemies for the fuel that we need to run our machinery? Boy, that's not smart, because I know if I was the enemy, first thing I would do is cut your supply. You know, that's the, that's the first, first step in war, cut off the supply, and then they can't fight you. So that's a bad thing for sure. It also raises taxes on natural gas, increasing the cost of nearly everything. Okay. At this moment, if I could snap my fingers and take away petroleum, boy, there'd be a lot of embarrassed people in here because you wouldn't have any clothes, your glasses would be gone, your iPhone's gone. There is nothing that runs this country that does not take petroleum. You want to talk about a windmill? Great thing, you know. First of all, it's a turning 
fan. What, what's in there? Gears. What do you got to have for gears? Lubrication. Lubrication is a petroleum product. Electric cars, tires, plastics, everything the car is built with is, comes from petroleum. And then you got to deal with the batteries. You ever seen a video of how they mine for, for lithium to make these batteries? Oh, it's much worse than drilling for oil. And then at the end of the day, when the battery is spent, you got to get rid of it. Another problem. So overall, the, the worry with green this and green that, look, it's fine. We saw when we had the ice storm a while back that if your entire grid, this is what you have to have. You have to have a 100% grid run on oil and gas. And then you can have 20% wind that you use from time to time. But when it really comes down to it, that's why Texas had such a hard time, because they only had an 80% grid, and they were dependent on the windmills for 20%. And when they froze up, now they're missing 20% of their, their grid, no go. So although it's a good thing, oh, by the way, you can't store that wind energy. They haven't figured that out yet, how to store it. You can use it as it's being created, but you can't store it and use it later. If you could do that, it'd be a much better thing. But it just isn't. So all this green stuff, look, I like clean water and clean air and, and, and pretty sights and all of that stuff. But uh, it's a pipe dream that one day we won't use any oil ever. It's just ridiculous. Anybody that's got a half a brain that actually thinks about it will know that that's not ever going to happen. Let's see. Creates over 150 new government programs. Now, we all know what government programs end up doing. It causes more regulation on us they, to the point where a man can't start a business anymore. You know how much seed money you have to have to get through the regulations that the government puts on you in order to open a business? Then the insurance you got to have in order to make sure that some guy walking in front of your business don't stub his toe and sue you, it's rough. It also includes $412 billion in taxes on small businesses, resulting in a top rate of 57%. 57%. Can you imagine running a business, having to pay people, pay insurance, keep product on the shelf, keep your customers happy, and also give the government 57 cents on every dollar that you earn? That you earn. They didn't help you put that building up and get product in there. They just watched you do it and then said, all right, pay us. Bad stuff. Now, earlier I talked about depending on OPEC and Russia and China for oil. Well, let me name some more enemy that we're going to be depending on for this leviathan of a bill to not pass. And that's two Democrat senators, Joe Manchin and Senator Sinema. Um, they have been sticking to their guns on this bill, saying that they will not vote for it unless it gets reduced drastically. and. You might well know that right now they are being offered everything in the world. We will give you this. We will give you that. Just vote for it. And also, in the back rooms, if you don't vote for it, we're going to run somebody against you. We're going to get somebody. We're going to give them plenty of money, and we're going to get you out of office. What do they call that, Sarah? Primary. We're going to primary you. So right now, I'm loving some Senator Cinema and some Joe Manchin. And part of the reason why on their parts is they are sticking to their guns. They have made a decision, and no matter what people are telling them, telling them they're sticking by it. Reminds me of a guy I know. I think his name is Clay Higgins. Because he sticks by his morals, he sticks by his guns. And let me tell you, even our own people at the top in our office they come down on Clay about all kinds of stuff. I mean, on Congressman Higgins about all kinds of stuff. And, of course, they've been on the Hill way longer than Clay has. Congressman Higgins has. <laughs> um, but 
Clay's the one with the name on the door. And that's what he tells them. My name's on the door. I'm going to make a decision. I'm listening to what y'all are saying. But then I'm going to make a decision and y'all need to stand by. And it's much easier for me to do that than them. Because <laughs> I'm just, me and Clay agree on a lot of things. Uh, not everything, but a lot of things. So, Reverend, pray for Joe Manchin and Senator Sinema that they stick to their guns. All right, that's what we need. Okay, enough about those two bills. And, Lee, you can cut me off anytime you want because I got a ways to go. I don't got to go to work. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I got a ways to go. What kind of time I got? Is there some time on this? About 20 minutes. About 20 minutes? All right, we're good. <laughs> Lee said 15. Okay, Lee said 15. All right, so let's talk about the border a little bit. Because the border has kind of been off the radar lately with these bills being in front of Congress and the Senate. So you're not seeing as much of it. Uh, but the problem is still there. As you all know, Congressman Higgins is the ranking member on the Homeland Security and Border Committee. So the amount of border encounters in 2021 has reached an all-time high. And it's all as a result, a result of Sleepy Joe's open border policies. In 2021, there were 1.7 million border encounters and 192,000 just in September. That's a 232% increase in comparison to September of 2020. So they're coming. They, they have been encouraged and they're on their way and they're not stopping. We have had over 170,000 encounters per month for the past seven months straight. Every month, 170 encounters. And we're not sending them all back. They, we're taking them in, and they're being bussed and flown to different areas. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. <laughs> all right. So the news media would have you believe that all of these illegal immigrants are family units and children all by themselves. Well, that's not true. Uh, over 1.1 million single adults were encountered in 2021 in comparison to only 350,000 in 2020. And the border crisis, of course, is much more than immigrants seeking asylum. We got criminals bringing guns, drugs, they're involved in human trafficking and everything else under the sun. 10,763 individuals with criminal records have been arrested at the border in 2021 in comparison to just 2,400 in 2020. That's a huge increase. U.S. Customs and Border Protection have seized more than twice the amount of fentanyl in 2021 as in comparison to 2020, over 11 thousand pounds of fentanyl. That's enough fentanyl to kill 2.5 billion people or the population of the United States seven times over. And we're worried about COVID? Give me a break. <laughs> so uh, earlier I said buses and secret planes. Okay. This is happening. They are flying illegal immigrants into red states in the dark of night and letting them go. And the reason why we know this is true, because Governor DeSantis from Florida has just filed a lawsuit for that very same thing. So you heard me say earlier that the Build Back Better bill has mass amnesty for everyone. Okay, so red states, influx of illegal immigrants, amnesty, pathway to citizenship, okay? They trying to flip these red states to blue. They want it all democratic everywhere. And I'm gonna say a little saying that Congressman Higgins always says when it comes to socialism. He says, you can tax and spend your way 
into socialism, but you're gonna have to shoot your way out. And Venezuela is a perfect example of that. If you don't believe it, do some research on Venezuela and find out exactly what's going on over there. Same thing that's happening right here, it's just been all the way through with them. It is, uh, it is a bad thing. So since Lee's looking at me with a mean face, I'm gonna shut it off right there. Uh, I'm a little afraid to say this, but um, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> That's always the roughest part. But if you have a question, I'll do my best. If not, maybe I'll get you an answer later. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, these charging stations, I mean, I'm sure y'all have seen the memes on Facebook where there's a truck with a generator on the back that came out to charge up a car that ran out of juice down the road. I mean, it is just a little bit silly that, you know, and they, they tout all electric, all electric, but where do you think that electricity comes from? Come on. I mean, look, let me tell you what a large part of the problem is with the United States is that most of our people are not engaged. The founding fathers were relying on a, a people that were in tune, that were listening and paying attention. And today we just don't have that. A lot of people just don't understand. And look, I'm one. And until Clay became a congressman, Congressman Higgins became a congressman, I. I didn't pay attention. I knew this and that and the other because I was a police officer and a, a prison guard, but didn't really pay attention. But now I know how important it is to pay attention. And some of you might ask, what are we going to do? Or what are we doing? Well, you got three branches of government. Legislative, well, we kind of out on that one because the Democrats control everything. Now look, some of y'all may not know how much control being in the majority is. I'm talking down to the hours at the gym and the setting on the air conditioner. Every single thing they're in charge of. Committees, you can write any bill you want. The first place it goes is the committee. If it's a Republican bill, all committees run by Democrats, it just sits there and rots. So we can't really do anything with legislation right now, even though we're writing some uh, and pushing it forth, which just proves that no matter what we write, they're not going to do anything with it. So of course, you have the executive branch. Well, that's Sleepy Joe. Good luck with that. And then we have our last hope, and that's the judicial branch. And we are working it through the judiciary. But these things move slow. But we are still starting to get some small wins. Um, COVID, as we've seen, is starting to turn the other way. The tides are starting to turn. And you know why the tides are starting to turn? Somebody's pocketbook. Look, look at the airlines. Staunch. You're going to have a vaccine or you're not working here. And when those pilots said, all right, good, I'm a pilot. I'm, I'm gonna find me a job. And all of a sudden, all these planes started getting grounded and they started lying, saying it was the weather or something else when all the other planes were flying. Um, all of a sudden, they changed their mind. Oh, we're, we're gonna make it uh, voluntary. If you want to, you can. But we're gonna promote doing it, but you can still work here. Well, the only reason why they changed their mind, it's not because Joe Biden called them and said, do it, or Nancy Pelosi. It's because it hit them in the pocket. And that's all, look, all democratic policies end up hitting everybody in the pocket. And when it does, things start to change. So I'll end on a positive note. We are not dead in the water. We are going to feel some pain before we start feeling something else. But we are in the fight, and we are not going to stop. No way, no how. That's all I have. Thank you, John, for all, all those words. Yeah.
about 10 minutes long on that. Um, so uh, a couple things. Um, one, the city of Morgan City and myself personally are sponsoring uh, tomorrow at the auditorium a uh, Veterans Day event at 6 o'clock. Actually, there's one at 11, a memorial, and then there's one at 6. We're going to have Jambalaya, Pasta Liar. I think you got a couple kegs of beer, some wine, some uh, soda pop, and a, a band. Any police, you tell, tell everybody. Any police, fire, veterans, active, non active, medical, anybody puts their life on the line for us, right? Um, is invited to come, eat, drink, don't sleep, um, and uh, listen to music and mingle with the people, right? So anybody you know, I've invited most people, but I probably missed a bunch. So anybody you know, uh, more than welcome to come, anywhere from the parish, anywhere. Um, a lot of people, I don't have their email. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. Eugene. <laughs> but I'm sure you could pass it on to your guys for me, please. Um, and, and also, just for one thing he said, if we just all got along, this world would be a lot better. But, you know, there's always power-hungry people, right? So, all right. Thank you, all and uh, Tiger. Thank you, Mayor Dragon. Um, don't forget, tomorrow is Veterans Day, so thank a veteran wherever you are. Uh, again, thank you all for your service. Uh, thank you and take, for taking your time out of your day to be with us, and thank you for your continued support of the Chamber. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next Chamber Luncheon. Join us for networking and meeting new people. Uh, please call the Chamber offices in Morgan City and Franklin for your, with your RSVPs for future events, and don't forget to check the Chamber wait, uh, website and Facebook page. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to thank the Chamber staff. Uh, they're doing a, an omens job of, of keeping the, the the chamber running daily. Um, uh, so let's give a big round of applause to. to <laughs> so thank you all so much. Uh, don't forget to check out the chamber website at www.stmarychamber.com as well as the chamber Facebook page. So if you have any questions, we're here for you as a chamber. And let's not forget shop local, 